All right. Well, give us your take on the grand jury report on mandatory overtime. This this is not anything new that, that we didn't know about. Uh, I've been saying for years that we need to do something about the overtime in the jail. Uh, we, we have about $10 million of overtime this last year, and more than half of that is jail. You can't really contribute that to natural disasters. It's just business as usual. When you have that much overtime in the jail, uh, you are not showing a value to your employees. You're causing fatigue. Uh, it, fatigue leads to mistakes. It leads to more sick time, workers' comp. Uh, mistakes lead to lawsuits. It's costing us a lot more than just the $5 million in, in overtime every year for, uh, for our employees uh, working so much. Uh, sick time in the jail has become a, uh, it's become a cultural standard there to use sick time as vacation uh, because guys can't get vacation. And it's been going on for over a decade, and it's something that we need to pay attention to and take seriously and, and fix it. Uh, some of these things are easy fixes. Some are going to be challenging. Uh, but I'm definitely up for the challenge to, to, to deal with these issues and fix them. Okay. Well, can you share your perspective on the staffing and construction of the North County Jail? The uh, staffing and construction of the North County Jail has been figured out. It was, it was done in a, a logical manner. Uh, it's going to move forward, and it's needed. We need another facility. But it's also been done at the expense of, of letting the South County Jail deteriorate. And so that's going to be our, our, our biggest challenge in the future is to look at the South County Jail and, uh, and figure out how to fund the, uh, uh, the remodel of that jail and, and make it uh, livable and humane for, for people in the jail. <clears throat> What's the primary reason you decided to run for sheriff? The primary re reason is change. Uh, I want to give the community a voice. I, I want us to have a responsible sheriff's office. I want us to have a leader that's going to be there and pay attention to community needs and to the needs of the employees of the sheriff's office. Uh, somebody who has, has their finger on the pulse of the local community and uh, will build public trust. And uh, I, I'm all about building public trust and paying attention to these details uh, so that the community trusts us so that we can do our primary mission of, of protecting the community. Well, what in the Sheriff's Department needs fixing or improvement? There are too many things to, to list uh, with the Sheriff's Office that, that need fixing. And uh, I'll, just name, I'll just name a few off the top of my head. Uh, one is the overtime. Of course, we just met, mentioned overtime countywide, especially the jail, uh, trying to integrate the, 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 the two classes of, of custody deputies. Uh, to where we can, can create a better environment uh, to address the issues of overtime. The attrition rate, uh, the recruiting, we need to, to fill the positions we have. We have over 50 positions. We need to fill them. We need to look at the local communities and, uh, and target various uh, members of the community to recruit people into to law enforcement. It's, it's getting harder, and we have to think outside the box, and we have to think... You know, this year and five years and 10 years and 20 years down the road to fill these positions and, and, and create an environment where people want to stay. What works well in the Sheriff's Department that you can build on? We have great officers. We have great deputies on the Sheriff's Office. We have uh, some of the, the best employees in California that care about the public. Uh, all of the programs that we have, most of the programs that we have that are very successful are because of the one or two deputies that have taken upon themselves to make it important because they care about their community. And we need to build that. And that's, that's building community-oriented policing and building trust with the community. So we, we need to build on that. Uh, I think many of our deputies do this very, very well. And we need to uh, reward that, and we need to build on that. If you do not win, you will be working under folks that you ran against. How will you handle that? I work for the community, and so <clears throat> I will always do my best. I will always give 110% to my community, and uh, that's, that's what I say. I'm a public servant. I'm always going to be a public servant first, regardless if I'm sheriff or I'm not sheriff, 
And uh, that's who I've been for the last 32 years of, of my life, and, and that's how I'll, I'll leave this uh, profession. Well, on the flip side, if you do win, how will you handle working with the two you ran against? I carry no animosity uh, or, or harbor bad feelings against anybody. I, I can work with anybody is how I feel. And uh, I think that the, the two candidates have their strengths and their weaknesses and uh, they have their uh, expertise. And you have to rely on other people's expertise. You, you have to have uh, sound counsel and recognize that other people have, have expertise and you need to uh, use that and, uh, and work together. What is your take regarding the ongoing issues of negative interaction between law enforcement and members of the minority community? This is something we really need to pay attention to. And when I created the Behavioral Sciences Unit, this was part of my goals too, not just to respond to issues involving mental health related calls, but to address implicit bias and have the, uh, uh, have the courage to, to admit that this exists and, and that we need to uh, address it and we need to train our officers and we need to make it part of our culture. Um, I, I support the, the, our, our immigrant residents and uh, I support it, uh, Senate Bill 54. I believe that it's fair. I believe it's the right thing to do. I, I don't think that uh, cooperating with uh, uh, federal ICE agents uh, in, in uh, uh, t giving up our primary mission of public safety is the right thing to do. Uh, I, I believe that we need to uh, instill that public trust so that the sanctuary state law it's actually the, the California Values Act, and it's my values that I share. Uh, we need to encourage uh, all of our citizens uh, to report crimes, not be in fear of, of being deported. Uh, we need to work on keeping families together, uh, especially, uh, especially children of families, which uh, children are affected uh, more than anything in Santa Barbara County uh, by deportation of, of their parents and themselves. So I'm not, let's keep the, the serious, violent criminals in jail, uh, but, but let's not separate families and uh, uh, let's, let's be fair and equitable for everybody. Is there anything else you'd like to add or some other points that you really need to speak about? You know, I, uh, I'm gonna call it a good old boy system that, that I've been looking at my whole life and, and fighting against. And uh, uh, I, I really want to have change in uh, the sheriff's office. I want to, uh, to see us train our officers and give us the tools, give our officers the tools that they need to do their jobs um, and, uh, and reward uh, the behaviors and the good work of the officers when they do a good job and respond to public needs. And uh, I, I'm just looking for uh, the public's vote June 5th so I can help make these changes. So, one, one more question. Um, you know, the sheriff's position has gotten, I mean, with the floods and the, the fires and the coordination between all these agencies, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty big role. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of experience that you have that's going to translate well to this position? What qualifies you for this? <coughs> yeah, I have the training, experience, and drive and energy to do the job of sheriff. Uh, I've been with the agency longer than the, two, the other two candidates. I've been a uh, law enforcement officer for 32 years. Uh, I've worked from the San Luis County line to the Ventura County line in various roles and capacities. Uh, I ran our records department, the courts, the civil unit, patrol. I spent a lot of time on patrol, probably more than both the other candidates I spent in the field on patrol. And uh, I, uh, I've taught at the Regional Academy. I taught for uh, OES, the Office of Emergency Services, the Governor's Office, uh, Advanced Officer Training. Uh, I've written manuals. I've certified training through the state for mental health, for actually even for mounted enforcement and arrest and control and use of force training. Um, I actually wrote the current manual, uh, co-wrote it with one of the nation's leading experts on arrest control and use of force. Uh, that they still use at the academies, and they use it in, a, in three counties at, at various police departments through San Luis, Santa Barbara, 
and uh, Ventura County, as well as a lot of, of areas in Los Angeles and Northern California. So I've done a lot in my career. I formed a nonprofit. I, I ran a youth center for 10 years, and uh, we, we served at-risk youth. Uh, I did this with no funding through the sheriff's office. Uh, I, I did this on, on my own and uh, you know, ran this program with uh, uh, youth, uh, youth leadership programs, after school programs, uh, uh, youth activities, physical activities. And uh, so I've, I've done many things throughout my career and a lot of people talk about doing things, uh, but I've actually done them and I've actually, uh, I've actually like set the bar on some of these uh, some of these uh, these issues and programs that, that I've developed. Uh, the, the Behavioral Sciences Unit, the Crisis Intervention tra Training, I, I started that in 2015. Uh, trained over 700 officers in this since I started the program and uh, recruited psychologists and brought them into the law enforcement arena in our uh, training so that they could help us with training and responding to mental health crisis and implicit bias training and other training that officers need to do the job to keep the public safe. Okay. As part of the training that uh, we have put on and created for the Sheriff's Office and we've included other agencies in Santa Barbara County offering this training to them, mostly for, for free uh, to, to have the officers uh, trained countywide, uh, de-escalation is a big part of it. So de-escalation involves teaching officers to slow things down, take a step back, not create an exigency, not let the person you're dealing with create an ex exigency, and use mindfulness in responding to uh, these crisis events. And that reduces the use of force. It, re it reduces the need for uh, force. And so this, this is a cultural change that, uh, that we need to, to instill in law enforcement officers, um, and I can do it, and I've been doing it.